Hey everybody, welcome back to Foil Drive. A really cool announcement today. We've uh, reached out to Kyle at Project Cedrus and we're going to do an integrated mast with our Foil Drive Assist Plus system, integrated into his aluminium mast. And the cool thing about Project Cedrus, he does lots of different adapters for all sorts of different foil brands. So it's a perfect collaboration in our eyes to, you know, that's what foil drive's about. Use your gear, the boards you already have, the foils you already have, and just add a motor system to it. Kyle's got the similar concept with his mask. So yep. a really cool collaboration uh, that we've got going on here. So. That's right. So where did this all come from and why does it exist? Like anything we do with foil drive, we try and add to the sport. We want to make whatever gear that we produce a positive attribute to foiling. Make it better or it doesn't exist. And this really boiled down to, you know, I myself, I just don't go foiling anymore without my foil drive, which I just don't do it. It was got to the point where like, well, let's try and design the next level of fit and finish, mm -hmm. integration, drag reduction, and optimum riding setup. Yeah. And this is where it all boiled down to, and we've done lots of testing, and this is what we've come up with, and it is, sweet little beauty yeah. we're going to go through all the technical bits and pieces later in the video but we're just introducing it now for those who might be interested watch to the end we can answer all your questions in one big go but it's out it's finally released and we Probably hope you a guys poorly enjoy kept it. secret <laughs> poorly kept secret like most things but um yeah we're excited we think this is a great collaboration between two different brands that give customers choice and we just want to iterate we're not a board or a mass manufacturer We've made some custom made hardware for ourselves, for this application to make mm -hmm. this all work. Yep. But we, uh, we're not here to compete with the other foiling brands. We want to empower those foiling brands. Yeah, and exactly. I think Kyle's in a similar situation. He makes all these beautiful adapters for you to run a whole heap of different wings. Yep. And because let's face it, who can keep up with the amount of wings coming out of this <laughs> day and age? There's hundreds of them. Yep. So it gives you time to play. So we're going to get into the tech stuff in a minute but that's it in a yeah, first glance. Pretty much. Okay, so what are the differences between this and the original setup? So it's a normal assist plus, but we are adding on as an option, if you choose to, start to go down that path, the integrated mast as a complete kit, the new version of the pod and the motor system built onto the assist plus. So it should be relatively obvious, but the main thing we've done here is we've removed the cable and the puck which you are used to having to tape on and secure. We've taken both of those and we've put it inside this very special pod that we've had to make to accommodate all that hardware. And then we've run the cabling down the trailing edge of the mast and into our own custom CNC machined base plates, specially made for foil drive. So this allows us to eliminate the drag associated with the cable that comes off the trailing edge of the mast and the puck. Now I just want to iterate, the normal system isn't, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, this is the next level up of hydrodynamic optimization that you can achieve if you decide to do that. So once you select your pot, your pot height in this particular arrangement, it's fixed, you can't change it. So that's one drawback, but at the same point in time, there's always another reason why. The positive is the drag reduction, high speed especially, is quite significant. Um, I'm not going to give you a lesson on hydrodynamics because most people will tune out, but the reality is the cable that comes off the trailing edge of your mast, even just a small section like this, actually has more drag than the entire pot and motor. Um, this shape here, with no exposed surfaces, uh, as I was just saying, has less drag than a small piece of cable. Now, for those who aren't foiling at really high speeds and going down big waves and that sort of stuff, it's not gonna really make a huge difference. But for those that really do appreciate any performance gains, that extra glide through the water, downwinding especially, uh, or sup surfing or foil surfing, this makes a big difference. And you can only do it this way if you wanna achieve those performance gains, but as I said, you do lose that adjustability, which we're all uh, very familiar with. You've got the ability to, to adjust the pod height on the original system. So you'd need to make the decision as to what works for you. Another reason why we went down this path is a lot of people are purchasing the Foil Drive Assist Plus for e-foiling. It's a cost-effective, cheap, easy to take on camping trips, on a boat, whatever. Um, so 
we're doing the integrated one that's designed for e-foiling. This just gives you extra performance through the water. If you're constantly on foil, powering around doing e-foiling, the integrated mast means that obviously there's no cable, there's no cable tracks, there's no tape. It's just done. It's perfect out the box. Just go and use it and you do get more speed and you do get a longer run time. So they're the reasons why we've done it. There's a lot of work that actually goes into making everything fit in such a tight space and in the trailing edge of a mast. Uh, it's a lot of labour from the four drive crew, but we're doing it for those that really want it. And um, we're going to leave it up to the community of four drive users. Some already have this to give their opinion and feedback. Uh, we like to rely on our customer base to give their unbiased, honest review of the equipment. We always think it's great. That's why we make it. But we're going to be keen to see how the community responds to the few kits that are out there now. Um, yeah, so that's it at a glance. There's some more specific details that we can go through a little bit later on, but basically the cable comes out the extreme trailing edge of the mast so that when the mast is installed on your board, it's completely flat. There's nothing new that you have to take into consideration when installing it, it's just consider it as a new mast. This is all billet machined aircraft grade aluminium. It's high quality stuff. And this is a very, very rigid mast. I'm actually enjoying it a lot. I'm 96 kilos and um, I've certainly put it through its paces and it's been holding up just fine. As Ben mentioned before, Project Cedrus, they do a great job of making, I think it's 22, you'll have to check with him, different adapters for different foils. So it's always good to check in with him and his website if we don't stock all the adapters, because there's so many of them, we try to stock the more popular ones. But you simply just two bolts on top of the mast, adapter goes on top, and you can drop your wing set on there. So we've obviously got these set up for axis. That's what we predominantly ride. But there's all sorts of different brands. Two bolts bolted on, off you go. You run your wing, your tail, and your fuselage on your mast. There's also an Armstrong adapter um, for these as well, which we don't stock. We will eventually. You can get them direct from Project Cedrus as they're a bit more of a specialized adapter because you have to provide the, the fuselage but that is also um, being catered for, which is really exciting. All right, some other information. So we do make a premium pod for this specific product. This is a special pod just for this mast. It's actually a, a very special nylon. So it allows us to make a very complicated shape to get all this stuff inside here and the cables all through and onto the, onto the mast. So this has actually got end caps in it, all glued up. This actually floats. It's actually sealed and it has its own buoyancy. So this actually adds to the buoyancy of your foil as opposed to retracting. Same goes with the mast. So we even go to the extent of sealing up all three cavities on both ends of the mast. Why do we do this? This also provides buoyancy. It's probably not necessary, but we're always trying to go that extra mile to make every little bit of the system as efficient as we can. So with the pod and the mask combined, these two things, if you put it in a bath of water, are just under neutrally buoyant. So whereas this would normally add weight to your system, when it's sitting in the water, the weight of the mast and the pod are actually basically cancelling themselves out, which is just, as I said, another little improvement that we've tried to make to the overall system as we're obsessed with weight and size. So I'm gonna hand over to Ben now and he's gonna take you through what you need to tell us if you wanna order this system in regards to placement of pods and cables and all that sort of stuff. Hey guys, so I'm just gonna quickly run through what information we need from you if you are interested in going down this path of building an Assist Plus with a Project Cedrus mast and the cable integrated. So if you're an existing foil drive customer, please just contact us at support at foildrive.com and we'll go through the options that we have for integrating your Assist Plus that you already own into a Project Cedrus mast because there is a few other things to consider there. But if you're a brand new customer and you want to buy a whole Assist Plus kit all built into a Project Cedrus mast, here's what you need to know. As Paul said men mentioned earlier, we're going to do 70, 80 and 90 centimetre masts. So you'll need to select which length mast you want. Then you've got to tell us what height you want the motor mount, you want the motor built to your, into your mast. 
So we're going to reference everything from the board surface effectively to the center line of the motor. So for example, this kit here is built in at about 14 centimeters from the board surface to where you want the center line of the motor. Obviously an e-foil setup the motor's right down the bottom. We put it almost as low as it can go before the propeller, no, to give good clearance for the, the tips of the propellers to the uh, fuselage. But an e-foil is obviously down there. And then any measurement anywhere in between, you just let us know that measurement as well. Thirdly, we need to know what length cable you need from your mast to your box. So much the same as ordering a normal foil drive assist plus, except we're running from the trailing edge of the uh, top plate of the mast back to your box. So we need to know that length. It's also important to consider exactly the same again, like a normal Assist Plus kit, is we only do a maximum of a two metre cable run. So please take into consideration what height you're running your motor to then add your cable length. So if you order an e-foil uh, motor position with the motor right down the end, you can't get a two metre motor from the end, two metre cable here. Uh, the full motor run is still that two metres due to voltage loss and performance loss, things like that. Uh, and then thirdly, and la or fourthly, sorry, and last is just what adapter you require. Um, as we said earlier, we do stock some of Kyle's or Project Cedrus's uh, adapters, but there is other adapters that he offers that are on a made to order basis. So please contact Kyle from Project Cedrus if you're looking for a different adapter that doesn't appear on our website or his. Uh, he can do custom things as well. Um, same with if you're not too sure exactly which type, because again, we're getting into the realm of different fuselages and things like that from different brands does change. For example, the three bolt uh, Nash uh, fuselages versus the newer two bolts. So uh, go and have a look. Kyle's got some great information on his website as well about all of his adapters, uh, but we're gonna have the most common ones uh, and then a growing range as, as this all moves on. So that's a pretty basic rundown. Mast length, motor height, cable length and adapter. Um, yeah, jump on the website and uh, you can order a whole brand new four drive assist plus kit with a Project Cedrus integration uh, via the website. Existing customers, please contact us and we'll go through the options. So another consideration is getting your head around, all right, where am I gonna place the pod if I can't move it? Yeah. So what wasn't initially sort of obvious at the time when I first started building this was just how slippery it is through the water compared to what mm. we're used to. And that did change the dynamic a little bit of how you set up your gear. So without trying to confuse it, I'm just gonna explain what we've experienced and you take from it what you will. Initially, I would prefer to run my pod really close to the board yep. because I want you know minimal drag, get up, have maximum free mast, and that was pretty much how we wrote it. And that's what the assumption going into this is what I would continue to choose, but the opposite actually happened. I ended up running the motor lower well, further away from the board or lower to the, to the wing. And the reason for that is I can kind of have my cake and eat it too in the form of, when I used to run my pod super slammed, again, that was for boiling waves, having fun, yep. maximum free mast. But when I'd peel off the back of a wave and I'd, oh, there's another set coming and I just want to zip back out there and flick on to the next one or we're downwinding. Well, it's like quite, just certain brakes that yeah. like fade away and then it reforms again, but yeah. you've got to pump across to it or something. And like I that. want to get somewhere and sort of like e-foil or foil drive over there. It was too close and it was trying to keep my height perfectly above the water when it's a slam like that, a little tricky. Yeah. So I ended up trying running it a fair bit lower and what I worked out is, is that for me, I can barely detect the drag of this on a small to medium sort of size wave. It's so smooth. I could do what I wanted to do, peel off, drop the pod back into the water without getting the board touching hit boost and zip out to the next bit or from downwinding, cut across. constantly stay across yep. above the water, cut across, go to the next bump, whatever. So it's kind of counterintuitive. We actually went the other way because you can kind of get both, yeah. if you will. But again, it is relative to body weight, you know? I think the two most important things is like what type of riding you're trying to do, mm. what type of person you are and how you use your motor. So call that a location, condition, personal kind of, uh, you know, factor. And then the other is that weight that you're about to talk yep. about is the difference between myself and Paul weight wise and our inertia when we're foiling through the water, how much glide we get on a given wing or just how much that a small amount of drag does or doesn't affect 
me versus does yeah. affect you exactly or, or vice versa so i think that's they're the kind of two key things is yeah your, your body weight and then what type of foiler you are what you're using mm. it for and i guess to expand on that thought is like if you're using your foil drive for winging in light winds and things like that where as soon as the board releases from the water your wing is going to over you know it's going to take over and you're going to have plenty of energy in that wing to get up on foil and stay on foil you don't really need that whole e-foil linking wave type no. scenario so keeping it nice and high and keeping as much clean mast as possible is, is great. Yep. But if you're someone who is out in big, fat, rolling swell in a bay or something like that, and you're nowhere near a normal, regular surf break, and you kind of, we like to call it skate parking it or something like yep. that, where you're kind of half e-foiling, half riding waves, and then you drop down the face of this big rolling swell, shoot in front of it, and then e-foil off, and then join into another section. Exactly. That's where that motor height can be very, very different, which again, yeah. the regular Assist Plus kit with the external cable gives you that options to move if one day you like to use it winging, the next day you'd want to teach your wife to foil or your, your friends or your kids or whatever, and then the day after that you want to go and just surf it and just have paddle assist. Hmm. The flexibility of having the existing kit is great, but if you're somebody who's just using it in sort of one way and knows kind of how you want to use it and it's condition dependent and all that kind of stuff, that's where a fixed yeah. height can really um, and that's yeah. where I ended up pretty much falling on. I, I run about 18 centimeters as sort of like my happy space. Yep. It's just high, it's just enough clearance that I could foil drive it, e-foil it, whatever you want to call it, without the board touching the water all the time. And, and for reference, we've got 24 centimeters on this one and 14 centimeters yep. on this, so this one. Is so a, Paul's 18 is basically Sort in of middle. in between the middle. Yeah. But I know we're waffling on, but people will ask us a thousand questions after <laughs> releasing this, so we're trying to give as much information. I'm a heavier guy at 96 kilos, and I've got some other customers out there with these that are using them now who are a similar sort of weight bracket. And they've all reported back that the actual drag reduction is so significant mm -hmm. that they don't care if the pod is slightly lower, because they could barely even feel it if they're putting it in and out of the water. Okay. Secondary to that, I like running it slightly lower like this because as Ben was saying before, we've got some pretty big rolling green waves, you know, big greenies that are coming in that I can be seven, 800 meters offshore. And now with this setup, I can give it full boost, get up to a much higher surface speed and just break surface tension, keep the board deliberately above the water and build up my surface speed to close to about 30 kilometers an hour and just flick onto these nice big rounded lumps. Whereas before, I could still kind of do the same thing, but when the cable was exposed and I was running the motor that low, when I'm on those high speed waves, I'm touching down, I could definitely feel the pod and I could definitely feel the cable. Mm. It wasn't like super detrimental, but I could feel it. Yeah. And myself and a customer of ours have actually been jokingly complaining to each other that we now don't have our brake because on some of the bigger waves we used to catch, we used to actually deliberately drop the pot in a little bit if we were sort of over speeding just yeah. to try and slow up a bit. We can't do that now. You drop the pot in, basically nothing happens at all. So yeah. I hope that makes sense. It's something you've got to have to sort of feel to sort of get your head around it, but also believe it. Um, but I have coached a few people when they sort of ask, Paul, you, you tell me, Paul, what do I need? I, I just want it. Anything you make, I want it you tell me what to run and I've always pushed them to a slightly lower one and no one's complained since. Yeah. And they've actually said, I get what you're saying now. I totally get that. And they've enjoyed it. And I can downwind this fine. Like I can yeah. pump. We, we yeah. both have pumped it in e-foil mode, mm -hmm. motor off and just pump. Yeah. And For the sake of it, crazy. I've done some downwind, like simulated downwind runs, two or three K runs with the e-foil mast and turn the motor off and you just e-foil onto a wave turn the motor off. There's definitely a bit of a technique there from going from motor power right down the bottom yep. to then free foiling, but you can definitely turn the motor off and just free foil and same in flat water with a pump and glide wing, you know, a pumping style mm. wing. You can definitely, it is possible with the integrated mast with all of that reduced wag to, drag, sorry, to actually turn off the motor and continue to pump. Whereas that is very, very difficult with a, a cabled, an external cabled system. It's yep. just that pros and cons of the two different things. Yep. And really that use case and desirability of having the most efficient, cleanest setup 
that's for a single purpose or you know a smaller range of mm. use cases that's really what this comes down to Correct. and it's not going to be for everyone but for those that yeah just want to have an integrated mast and that's just their four-wheel drive mast and they might have their other carbon mast or something for winging and towing and whatever, whatever else, else <laughs> then yeah that's 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 great it's a it's a dedicated setup so so hopefully we've covered pretty much most yep. things and um, as we've mentioned a few times we we want our end users and our end customers to be our greatest advocates as well so um, there's, there's a couple of team riders and, and people that already have these masks and customers so they'll jump in onto our Facebook group and give some feedback yep. we're going to continue with the podcast series talking to those sort of people about all this kind of stuff yep. so um, and yeah, don't be afraid to reach out to the community and, and ask questions and the, the motor is also removable like all the other kits um, this is pretty much one of the reasons why whoopsie one of the reasons why we went down this path is mm -hmm. serviceability of something that you can't remove, yeah. put in a bucket and swill around. Um, you can do exactly the same thing, remove your rotor and put it back on just like every kit does now. So that's the same for that as well. So I think that covers everything. Yeah. Should answer most questions. Again, if we haven't co covered everything, you can always send them in. If you do want to have a phone call and a private chat because you can't make your mind up, we do offer that. You yep. just need to send us a request and we can call you back. I've spoken to many people. I think this is supposed to be not really f released yet, but I think there's like 20 something of them out there already. Something like that. Um, and I've spoken to nearly every single one of them initially because this is, oh my God, where do I put the pod? <laughs> so um, we can have a chat if you'd, you'd like some extra coaching on that. And For sure. Yeah. Have fun. Get yep. out there. Have some That's weight. It. It's the next step. All right. Back to work. <laughs>